Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, Warren Ellis, uh, we're not, this is not a video about Warren Ellis. It is really the difference between kind of what is morally right or what we think is the right thing to do versus what is legal and what is maybe a company policy. And those two don't always align. They often don't align, actually, in many ways. And the other thing is people have individual values. I mean, of course they do. Everybody has their own perspectives on how they live their life. That's why we have different religions. That's why we have different politics. We have all these different things. And that's not a bad thing. I always get really, really leery when every, you know, anyone starts you know, talking about we should only have one system. That's, that's, a, that's always like a giant warning flag in my, in my head. I did this video with Sean Murphy that should be up by now, uh, unless I am a complete idiot and get these things out of, out of sequence. But we talked a little bit about kind of, you know, what it meant to, to be liberal back in, say, the 90s and what it means to be liberal now. And they're just radically different, radically different. And I, I hate the memory holding people are doing today of saying, you know, oh, well, the way it is today is the way it's always been, which is not even remotely the case. I mean, once upon a time, if you leaned left, and, and for me, it was never a hard lean any direction, but I would say in the early 90s, leaned left for sure. I was thinking about this, though. I don't think I've ever voted for, I, I mean, I, I voted for, I, I was the guy who voted for Ross Perot for what it's worth. Um, you know, so you can call me that idiot. I'll take that one. Uh, but it's uh, that that was once the party of like, you know, free speech and no censorship. And you would never dream of, uh, you know, it would, be, it would be the I don't agree with what you say, but I defend your right to say it kind of perspective. That once was a left leaning value. Uh, that is not that is not I, I don't think anybody would characterize that today. Of, of Well, frankly, either of the parties, but especially uh, the left you know, side, which is, you know, all you know, I, when I see are these statements, like I said about. Um, we need to, uh, you know, we, we, we need to not allow somebody to say this. We, uh, you, you know, this, this spreading of misinformation has to be stopped kind of stuff. It worries me because it on multiple fronts, but the biggest one is I like the world in which we trusted our people and we taught our people how to think for themselves. And if we're saying now we need to protect people from, you know, misinformation of this type, it feels like we're giving up on that. To some extent, it feels like we're giving up on this idea that, you know, people should have the ability to think critically for, for the for themselves. And I, I'm not I don't want to give up on that. I think it's smart for people to to, you know, you, you do have to do the work. You do have to do the research. You do have to, you know, make yourself not sound like an idiot. And, and you know, you, you I think that's good. But we get to comics. So I, this I'm conflating this with another topic that came up. A bunch of people mail me saying, what do you have to say? How do you respond with uh uh, there's some video of, um, uh, you know, on another channel, somebody saying you, uh, you know, how, how I felt about the Warren Ellis situation was different from how this person felt about the Warren Ellis situation. But by and large, we're the same because I'm not a cannibal. Um, and I, I, I admit I was confused by that analogy. And it would be very helpful if people would, uh, you know, send me the location. <laughs> like, would you want me to comment on something? You need to give me like any more context than just some guy was talking about you. Cause no, you told me who. So finally I tracked it down. It was, uh, it was in one of Zach's videos and it was, um, very much not a main point of kind of what he was doing, but his, his basic comment was, you know, I seem to be more bothered by the Warren Ellis situation as something wrong took place. Whereas, and, and he didn't necessarily define kind of his perspective, but just that, you know, it wasn't as big a deal as, as kind of people made it out to be. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. This is not exactly what he said. I, I don't know what to say about the cannibalism. It's, it is true. I, uh, I'm not a cannibal. There you go. Uh, but it's right in the kind of neither here nor there, but it, it got me to think about kind of one of the big, uh, areas of miscommunication that happens in comics a lot. And it's where I think I get beat up because I take almost a, you know, I gave you that whole intro in the beginning to give you my point of view which usually comes from the point of, I'm going to throw out some information, I'll give you some analysis of it, and then I'm going to stop there, and you're going to figure out what you think of it. You're going to figure out whether you like it or don't like it. If I do tell you whether I like it or don't like it, and sometimes I do, um, I have zero expectation that you're doing, you're, you're going along with me because I'm the one who said it. And I think this is a big difference between myself and a lot of other channels. No, not that one, not, not Zach's, but other channels where there is this kind of built in expectation that you're going to go along with what the host is saying that, you, you know, by viewing it, you are kind of signing a contract. You're going to think the same way. I, I find that weird. And that's never an expectation here. My, my hope 
Hey, I always get weirded out when somebody's like, I trust everything you say. Like, please don't. Don't. <laughs> you make up your own mind. Please. Uh, that's weird. Uh, where this, The Warnell situation represents an interesting case because here's the, you know, whenever I would post videos about this, somebody would come in and post, Warnell's did nothing wrong. Like it was a sentence that they were just regurgitating. And then I learned that a different channel uh, it was basically informing people to come to my channel and post Warren Ellis did nothing wrong like a robot, uh, which people gleefully did for reasons I, I have never understood or what the point of all that is. But uh, that guy's a dick. <laughs> Blowly. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it's kind of missing the point. Here's the thing. If you work for, an, uh, for a company, if you work for Merck right now, they're in the news, right? Or if you work for Pfizer or you work for... Microsoft or Amazon, if you work for Walmart and you're an employee there and you basically, uh, you know, get yourself involved in the situation that Warren Ellis got himself involved in, um, you're going to get fired. Nine times out of 10, you're going to get fired. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if the women came in and were kind of in on the bit and knew what was going on. It doesn't matter if it was kind of their choice to opt in. It doesn't, it, none of that matters. It's going to go against a company policy. Uh, this is kind of my point of like, if you go do this at your company, you're going to get in trouble. Um, you can take that, you can take your chance because it's not a hundred percent. And there's certainly companies where, you know, you might dodge trouble, but I'd ask, you know, why is it worth it? It, it you know, I, I mean, maybe the, you know, Maybe the pussy's that good. I don't know. Sorry. I, nobody expected to hear that in the video today. Um, but it's just, it's it's a bad idea to go down. Okay. Uh, I don't think this is really a refutable point, but certainly you can argue with it. I, I mean, you know, you can go ask the HR in your company, be careful about doing it. If you go in there and say, hey, I was just wondering if I, uh, you know, basically uh, promised a bunch of women that I could kind of get them advancement in the company if they have sex with me, would I get in trouble? Don't ask that way. You're going to put yourself on a, you know, on a list. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Just for your own good. But here's, so, okay, so by all means, argue if you can. I, I don't think, again, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that chance in a company. Your mileage may vary. All right. Well, there's, then there's one difference here, though, is Warren Ellis is not an employee. He's a contractor. He's a freelancer. And the, the corporations tend to keep freelancers at arm's length uh, for their own purposes, basically. And this is kind of the whole crux is uh, when they feel like it, they keep the freelancers at a distance. And when they feel like it, they bring the freelancers in and kind of put the burden of, well, you work for us, so therefore you should do extra things, kind of pressure on them. Talk to any comic creator, they'll tell you at various times they that hypocrisy comes up of like, well, you're not really an employee, but hey, you do work for us. If you'd like more work, then you should like do all your own marketing. And by the way, you should do little extra things for us. It's as if you were an employee. And that goes on in lots of companies, not just comics. If Warren Ellis is a contractor, does this change anything? Well, sort of. Uh, if it all went to court, and it really kind of went to a, a you know, full-blown, uh, you know, Warren Ellis decides to sue, uh, you know, for not getting work. Unfortunately, he'd have very little ground because freelance agreements are really at will. Uh, and it would be very easy for them to duck out on that, you know, on that standpoint. There, there is a possibility, though, he could successfully make a case to say, I'm not an employee. I'm not a, I'm not in a hiring decision. All I'm doing is, you know, I, I mean, it was, uh, you know, I, you can accuse me of being a cat, I, I guess, is the, is the way you'd say it. Uh, but, you know, this isn't against the law and, and so on. Um, he might win in that case. It would be murky. Uh, lawyers will tell you, oh, no, he'd have a rock solid case and everything else. I mean, because they want the case. But the reality is it's hard to say where that would go. Um, it, it's very likely that you know, whether he made the case or not, he's still going to fall under employee rules for the simple reason that no company, FTE, contractor, freelancer, person who's close or at arm's length is going to want to put up with any of the blowback of any of this. So they would most likely move to terminate. And that, you know, when you have an at will agreement that you could basically say, you know, I, I didn't technically fire you. I don't think anybody, nobody technically fired Warren Ellis. They just declined to take more projects from him which is a, you know, a, a lousy kind of cynical way to say, 
yeah, we, we exercised our ability to, you know, hire and fire at will using fancy terms. And this is what we got. Uh, that, you know, that again, this is, this is something that would happen. But then the other side to this, and this is kind of the side that's represented in that video Zach did, but it, it is the, but is this morally right? Did he morally do anything wrong? And that is a much harder call. And, and by the way, people may be like surprised, depending on your point of view. Chances are you have a point of view, you have an opinion on whether that's right or wrong. Um, it, it, it's, but th that's independent of what is going to happen at a company. My advice is, did Warren Ellis do anything wrong? Well, uh, you know, in the eyes of his company, in the eyes of the people giving him work, yeah. Um, in a good, using good common sense to navigate your career, yeah, he did something wrong for himself. He did something that was putting his career in jeopardy, and it did. I mean, that's, but in everything you do in life, you're taking risks. You, you get to choose those risks, and you, you know, you live with the consequences of those risks. And some of these risks may not be fair, but that doesn't mean there's not consequences. If I go out at night at 2 a.m. and I walk around an area that's known to have high crime, um, you know, I am taking a risk that I'm going to get attacked or beaten or mugged or whatever it happens to be. I'm taking that risk. That doesn't mean the beating and the mugging is morally right because I'm in the wrong neighborhood. It just means that that is uh, I'm, I'm taking a higher risk than if I, you know, stayed in my house at two in the morning. Or, you know, went to a, a well-lit, heavy populated bar where there was security and it was safe. That's, that's, these are the situations you get yourself into. There's a major difference between whether it's kind of legally right or wrong, or whether the company has rules or not, and whether it's morally right or wrong. These are two different pieces. And when you blend the two together, you get into really messy situations. I think it's very true, and I, I'm sure I'll isolate a bunch of people by saying this, that, you know, the, the women who were getting involved with Ellis knew exactly what they were doing. They knew the, the you know, the, the game that was being played. And they were using Ellis as much as, in theory, he was using them for their own benefit. It, absolutely true. Uh, it, you know, firsthand, um, a couple of people who I believe, you know, were in this uh, complaint, although they may not have been, would talk about, you know, and, and on the forums, hell, on the Warren Ellis forums, people would talk about how slutty a picture they could put together in order to kind of get somebody's attention. If you're, if you're openly discussing that, then again, you know what you're doing. You can't come back later and say, um, well, I was used. You, you were, you were walking into that situation morally. You were, you were. None of that, though, changes how a company might respond to it. And I also believe that, that rules should be rules in the sense that rules should be fair. And this is a, a whole third point to this entire situation. If, as a company, you're going to state certain values that you have, you cannot selectively enforce them. And this is one of my core irritations with comics in general is because people, creators uh, or editors or companies, will go on social media and they'll loudly decry fan behavior or different ad different attitudes, different things. So they'll loudly uh, condemn certain things. That whole uh, pledge that went out, like we condemn these, these parts of the comic industry. Okay, if you're going to say that, then you need to live it. And if that means it takes out your buddy, uh, Warren Ellis, or it takes out somebody who's one of your own, then it takes out one of your own. You should live by what you say. And, in, you know, including yourself. If you post a pledge that says, I won't do this and this and this and this, and then you proceed to go do it, then you deserve to suffer the consequences of your own statement. I, I believe that. I have no room for hypocrisy here. If you're going to say something, then you better live by it. And that's, that's just, that's how it should be. So kind of three parts, you know, Again, from a very kind of boring, dry company rules perspective, uh, yeah, that's that. What he did was a problem, and you should avoid it for yourself. Don't don't get yourself in that problem. Even if you're just fine doing it, even if your friends are doing it, even if other people are getting away with it, why put yourself through that aggravation? That's my point. From a moral perspective, it varies. Again, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's fair to completely condemn and beat up on Ellis for this when 
you know, A, other people are getting away with it. B, uh, the, the people involved were more than happy to not just support it, but participate for years. I mean, the, the Heidi McDonald kind of absolute head spinning of not just being aware, but being aware for a long time, joking about it, uh, participating in, in a lot of that stuff, and in some cases attacking uh, some of the people who came forward before it became fashionable not to, and then suddenly doing an about face and saying, well, this is wrong. Yeah, I think that's that's BS. And I, I think that when a lot of people come in and they post, you know, Ellis did nothing wrong, they're thinking about that side of it. They're thinking about the side where it is hypocritical. And I think that's wrong. And then I can I think, you know, again, that third piece. Um, just just do what you say you're gonna do. And if you're gonna, you know, if you're going to go for Twitter likes and attention by posting these uh, very sanctimonious uh, rules or, or, you know, this is how it should be. If you're going to go on the war path to one of your peers or a customer or a fan about certain behavior, then you have now entered into a bit of a contract where you, you have to live by what you are, you claim to live by. You cannot go attack somebody and then turn around and do the same behavior and expect that it, everything is fine. Um, you know, one of the aspects that has gotten lost in all this is that for many years, uh, Ellis uh, did attack uh, people for this behavior. Did did say this was uh, you know wrong and and went after several fans and customers for this kind of thing. So in that regard, I have a hard time as I'm watching now. Suddenly, a bunch of videos and people crop up saying, "Oh, this guy did nothing wrong. We support this guy." It's like it's hard for me to do some of that after watching him on his forums and other places uh, aggressively aggressively attack people for doing the exact same thing. And to me, the little bit of karma uh, is kind of my, my bias. So I hope that explains all this. Tell, just tell me what you, when you want me to comment on something, you got to give me context, please, in the future. That would be helpful. And, and keep in mind, everything I've just said, you may hard disagree with. And that's okay. I, I don't need you to agree. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel bad if you disagree. I hope you disagree for a good reason and not just because somebody else told you to disagree, but uh, you know, it's your own business. You can do what you want and you live your life the way you want. And that's, uh, that's me. Everybody keeps telling me I'm a libertarian. Maybe, maybe that's the, the answer here, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I think uh, I like a world where people make up their own decisions, have their own brain, you know, have to think about it every now and then have to do the hard work of, uh, you know, researching the things they believe and, and forming an opinion. I think that's, uh, that's healthy for a functioning society. Uh, so there, there you go. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope this helped and thanks for listening.